In this video, we're going to see how we can communicate with Unity from JavaScript or PHP. This allows us to use Unity to make really cool looking complex visuals and work with external data. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your CodeMonkey and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so this is a bit of a different video from the usual. I was researching how to make a nice stats display in Unity in order to visualize some data from my website, but I couldn't really find much. It's actually very simple to do, so I'm hoping if someone is looking for a solution to this problem, they come across this video. We're going to make a simple scene in Unity and export to WebGL. Then we're going to look into the JavaScript code in order to call functions inside of our build to interact with it. And then we're going to use the graph we created in a previous video to make a visual graph that receives data from JavaScript or PHP and displays it in Unity. So like I said, I wanted to visualize some data from the website. I know there are tons of excellent JavaScript charting tools, but I'm not very experienced in JavaScript and CSS, especially when it comes to making something look good. Unity is a game engine, so it's perfectly set up for making something visual and I'm already very experienced in it. There are actually several methods mentioned in the Unity manual, and I'll link that page in the description. Here I'll use the simplest way which perfectly solves my problem. Through JavaScript, we can use the function on the Unity WebGL instance called sendMessage, which takes an object name, then a method name, and finally an optional value. So let's try that. Here I am in my scene, so let's make a simple sprite. So over here I have a simple circle, just drag it, and there it is. Alright, so here we have a very basic sprite. Now we want to interact and change the color. So in order to interact with it, as you saw, the function requires an object name and a method name. So in here, let's make a new object. Let's call this our JavaScript hook. And let's make a script. So a new C Sharp script, our JavaScript hook. And let's attach it onto the object. Now in here, the script does not necessarily have to have the same name as the object, but this helps keep our scene nice and organized. Okay, now in this script, let's make some methods to simply change the color of our sprite. Alright, so here we have a reference to our circle sprite renderer, and then a function to tint red, which simply sets the color and one to tint in green. Okay, now just for testing, let's call these functions from keypress. All right, so we can test by pressing these two keys. Let's see. Okay, here we are with default sprite. Now I press T, and there you go, now it's red. Press Y, and there you go, now it's green. All right, awesome. So our very basic logic is working correctly. Great. Now let's make this into a WebGL build. So we just need to go into File, Build Settings. And over here we have the WebGL, and we simply build. Okay, it's done, and here we have our build running on a browser. And if we press our keys, yep, we can still tint the color. Okay, so far so good. Now, we don't want to tint it based on key presses, but rather based on JavaScript buttons. So here is the HTML file as it comes from the build. And now in here, let's just make some very basic buttons. All right, so here we have two very basic buttons. So essentially just a div that we can click. So in order to click, we use the onClick parameter. So here we can put some JavaScript code. And it's in here that we go into the Unity instance. So this is the object that is created all the way up here. So use that, then we call send message. And now first we pass in the object name. So again, back in the editor, our object name is over here, the JavaScript hook. So we pass in the object name and then we pass in the method name. So in this case, it's tint red. All right, so we have our two functions. When we click, we're going to execute this JavaScript code. Let's see. Okay, here we are, and there's our two buttons. Now as I press on this one, and there you go, the sprite turned red, press this one, and it turned green. All right, so just like this, we can interact with our Unity instance from some JavaScript code. Awesome. Now in this send message function, we're calling with the object name, the function name, and then we can also pass in a optional parameter. So right now it's empty, but we can pass in either a number or a string. So let's test that. Back in our Unity editor, let's make two text fields. All 
All right, so I've added two different text fields. Now let's handle them in our script. All right, so there it is, just like that. We have our references for our text objects, and then we simply have a set number and set string. Okay, now let's make our WebGL build. Okay, here we have our new WebGL build with our two text fields. And again, the color still works, okay? Now let's do the JavaScript to interact with these. So here we are on the index.html and just copy these. So for the number, here is the function name, set number. So we pass in set number, and then let's say a number. Then we have set string, and then we can pass in a string. All right, let's test. Okay, here we have our two buttons, so I can change the color. Okay, that works. Now change the number, and there you go, he received the number, change the string, and there you go, he received the string. So just like this, we are calling a whole bunch of functions, passing in a whole bunch of different parameters. Right, awesome. Now you might have already guessed how we can expand upon this to pass in pretty much anything we want. If we can pass in a string, then that means we can take whatever that we have, encode it into JSON, and easily send it into Unity. If you're not familiar with JSON, check out the video linked in the description where I cover how it is and how it's formatted. I've also covered using JSON to make a save system, so check that out to see how you can use JSON to encode save data, which is similar to what we're going to do in here. So let's try to send some JSON. Back in our Unity script, let's make a simple object to test our JSON parsing. Alright, here we have a simple object with two fields, a string for the name and an int for the age. Now a function to receive it. So we have a function with a parameter type string. So we're going to receive our JSON. And then we use the JSON utility. We do from JSON, convert that JSON into our JSON object. So here we have our JSON object. All right, and then we simply update our string. Okay, that's it, very simple, let's test. Okay, now in our HTML code, let's make an object and pass it into our Unity instance. So over here in our JavaScript, let's make a JavaScript object. Okay, here we have a JavaScript object. Now we convert it into JSON, so we use json.stringify. So here we have our JSON string, and now let's make the button to send it into our game. So again, the function name is called testJSON. So that's the function name. And then in here, we pass in the object that we created in here. So the JSON string. All right, let's see. Okay, here we are and we can still change colors. We can still send a number, send a string, and now a JSON object. And there you go, here we have our object. It correctly parsed the name as John HS34. So our Unity WebGL build correctly received a JSON string and parsed it to get the name and age. Awesome. All right, so here we have our functioning build receiving any data we want from JavaScript. We can take it one step further and get some data with PHP and use it in our JavaScript code. All right, so here we have some simple PHP code. So we have our JSON string, then we go into our PHP, we create a new object, we call JSON encode, and then we simply echo the JSON representation. So if we go back into our build and we call this function, and there you go, now it received Amy with age of 29. So just like this, we are essentially communicating with Unity from PHP. So these are the basics, and now you can easily expand upon it. For example, here I have this scene, which has the graph that was made from scratch in a previous video. So here is the graph running inside of Unity. And yep, here we are on the WebGL build. And now with this button, we can pass in different values to Unity. And I click, and there you go, now the graph received a bunch of different values. So click on them, and there you go. So here we have some data being displayed and all of the data is external and not hard coded inside of the Unity WebGL build at all. So now you know how to interact with a WebGL build from JavaScript or PHP or anywhere else. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.